Welcome to Dust Geek. I am so excited about this distribution that I'm going to share with you. You guys know I don't do a lot of distribution review videos, but I've been hearing a lot about Ubuntu Mate recently. Everybody's been talking about it, and I wanted to find out what it's all about. Now, I've been using i3. You know I love XFCE, and I still have love for all of those things, but I like to try new things. And sometimes I go in on recommendations to try those new things, and I'm like, why? What is this? And other times I get into the distribution and I just instantly fall in love, probably because I find something familiar. And there's a lot of stuff that's familiar in Mate that makes it just brilliant. But on top of that, we're running Manjaro Mate. And there's a little bit of differences here if you're running, say, Ubuntu Mate and others as far as the pre-setup defaults and configurations and those type of things. Manjaro being based on Arch obviously has different software package management this is what it looks like when you first log in. Let's just take a look here. You got the welcome to Manjaro screen. Of course, with Manjaro, if you have an NVIDIA card or an AMD video card and all that, it auto detects, auto installs your drivers for you. You don't have to mess with any of that. Is that not a godsend, by the way? Absolutely brilliant work that they do on this team. And I've changed the wallpaper and I've added some things as I've gone along. But for the most part, this is what it's going to look like when you boot in. You're going to have your icons here on your desktop. You're going to have a menu system. You can see now the difference between this if you've used Ubuntu Mate and stuff where the toolbar I think is generally up at the top. But they've got it down here. And when we look at the menu that we're using here, we're using the Brisk menu from the Solus project, which is really cool. I love the Brisk menu. Now for me, Whisker has a little bit more customization that I can find easily. Like if I want to extend this or make it smaller or bigger, but the brisk menu is absolutely beautiful, well-organized menu with, you know, all your applications, your favorites, your accessories. Everything's organized very simply, and you see that right off the bat when you get into Mate. And I haven't spent a ton of time with this, but when you see a distro you love, you have to talk about it. And I can't wait to see your guys' feedback on Mate. Those who love it and those who haven't tried it yet, definitely take a look at this because there's something really, really brilliant here. So before we get started, let's look at what they, the experts, the developers say about their own project here. First, we got to give a shout out to the brilliant minds who contribute and make this brilliant project. So Stefano, Martin Wimpress, Wolfgang, Vlad, Clement, and Mike, huge shout out to them and all of these beautiful contributors, translators, past contributors that make this project what it is. We always owe them a huge thanks. They dedicate their time to this for us at no expense to us. And that's a pretty amazing thing. We get to use this. So the Mate desktop environment is the continuation of GNOME 2. So for those who don't think I like GNOME, you're going to be in for a surprise because apparently I really like GNOME 2. It provides an intuitive and attractive desktop environment using traditional metaphors for Linux and other Unix-like operating systems. It's under active development and they're continuing to add support for newer technologies and things like that. They've got lots of news here and forums and information you can get on Mate. Of course, you can go to Manjaro site as well for the Manjaro Mate version that they've just done a great job on the pre-configurations here. So when I talk about, when I first get into distro, one of the first things that I do is start right-clicking on things because I want to see how easy it is to get to settings, to get to the programs that I want, to customize it. And in this aspect, it reminds me very much of XFCE. If you want to click on this panel, in fact, this panel menu options are ridiculously familiar. And I'm pretty sure XFCE has basis in GNOME 2.0 as well. So maybe there's some shared things. You go to about, about panels, it says it's the Mate panel, but it looks ridiculously close to what I see in the XFCE panel. Maybe there's some history there, and I'm sure you guys will fill me in on that but you can add new panels here although they don't seem to be as customizable for instance if i add this new panel and i go into the properties here i couldn't figure out a way how to shrink this down like in xfce you can make it so that you could use this as a dock for instance uh, and here it looks like it's more of just a panel although you can make it longer for instance like we can make it bigger uh, and we can change its position and where it's added. I can't find a way to shrink it. I've tried like alt key on it and control key and I don't see any options here. Well, you can change opacity, you can change the background, you can even put an image behind it. 
So some pretty cool stuff there. Of course, when we're done with it, we can just go delete this panel. Very customizable, very easy. Another thing I look for is the simple things that should just be, you should be able to do without having to think about or go through huge configuration menus to find. And that's the time. A lot of these distros default to 24 hour time. I don't like 24 hour time. So I go over here, I right click and I can go to preferences and I can change this very easy location weather uh, the time formats that it uses, 12, 24, meaning it's, it's just, it's customizable, but simply done. It's not one of these things where you've got to go sit online and read forums to figure out how you change the time in your toolbar. It, it, that shouldn't be an issue that you run into, I don't think, in 2018 with Linux. So I love when I get into a distro and see things like that, the easy customization. You right click on the desktop, you're here with a bunch of options. We've got create folder, create launcher, create document, open in terminal, change desktop background. Everything you would expect to see when you right click on your desktop. Again, brilliantly done. You've got a beautiful selection of wallpapers here that you can choose from. Of course, you can go in there right away and customize and change your theme. If you want to change your icon set, this was the one thing that was kind of hidden. I wish they would just have change icons here because it took me, this is one where I had to read the form to find out where it was, but you click on customize and there you have your icons finally if you want to change them from the papyrus theme to something else. Of course, papyrus is a beautiful icon theme, so no reason for me to change it, but uh, that was a little more hidden than I would like, but outside of that, we'll forgo, we'll forgive. Then you've got the control center here. Control center, brilliantly, brilliantly done. Everything you really need to be able to get into to customize your machine to change things is all here from your Bluetooth adapter hardware. Of course, I install KDE Connect because you can install that in any distribution and it's just a brilliant way of interfacing if you have an Android device and apparently they may be adding iOS support as well. You've got your NVIDIA X server settings here that you can play with. Uh, Manjaro settings manager, Mate tweak tool. So let's take a look at that. So in the Mate Tweak tool, we can remove things from our desktop or add them. You've got your interface here, your panels, and your windows that you can change their behaviors, their performance, you know, set high DPI if you've got a high DPI monitor in there. So this is a lot more current, you know, utilizing Manjaro and Mate's uh, constant development for this, a lot more current for the latest and greatest hardware, which this is running on the beast right now. So there you go. You've got your notifications over here. Of course, in Manjaro, you can change your kernels if you want to. If you need to update your software, you can get to it there. You've got your sound interface and preferences. Just beautiful. Everything you would expect to be on your desktop is there. It makes sense. It's where it should be. Um, I absolutely love it. So it comes with the Kaja file manager here, which I haven't used Kaja a lot, but I actually really, really like it. And one of the things I've noticed the Manjaro team has done so well here, much like Arch in its recent beta release, uh, they've, they've done this as well, is now this detects automatically, which if you're in Ubuntu and Debian-based distro, I don't have this issue. But for some reason with Arch-based distros, I tend to have an issue where it does not discover uh, my network drives immediately or other computers on the network. You can see the Arch Merge here system. You can see my Synology NAS there. I was able to get into them immediately and start going, meaning this whole thing is out of my way. I can just get in here and start playing with it. That's what I love. That's what I wanted to tell you about. I've been using this for a few hours. I'm absolutely enjoying Mate, even though it's a completely world different from, say, XFCE. Well, not from XFCE, from i3, where I came from, and it's very familiar to me because of the XFCE uh, that you guys know I love. But there's something really important that I wanted to do. I think I've covered most of the basics, some of the pre-installed software and things, you know, changing appearance, and I've put a bunch of software on here. It, the pre-installed software is pretty much what you would expect. There's a lot of Mate-based tools in here. We can look at multi color selection, disk analyzer, system monitors, search tools, calculators, terminals, tweaks. Of course, I use Terminator. Uh, you've got Eye of Mate uh, in here as well, and you know just a bunch of different tools. There's a couple issues that I've run into before we get into this very important thing that I'm going to cover. Like when I did the About Me, this was a huge picture that I picked, which, you know, shame on me. But I picked a picture that just happened to be huge. And when I selected it, the entire screen got taken up and I couldn't even 
find the close button to close it out. So that seemed like a kind of a tiny uh, little bug uh, there that would need to be fixed. And then this is the next issue, and I really hope it doesn't do it since I rebooted. But every time I go in to edit this menu here, so if you go in to right-click on your menu like you would on a whisker menu and you click Edit Menus, it goes away. You see the menu icon's gone? And so, you know, you would make your changes, you can make adjustments, add different items and, you know, change their locations, et cetera, to your menu. And then you're done and it doesn't come back. I don't know why. But you can go here and do reset panel and it will pop back up. So that's the workaround. But that seems like that needs to be fixed there. But otherwise, those are the only two issues uh, that I've run into. But you see, once I reset that panel, now I got to go back into preferences and I got to set all of my individual stuff up again, et cetera. But here's the kicker. You know when I do a distro review, I always have to play a game in it. And on Destination Linux this week, one of the things that, uh, one of the games that came up was the Communist Dogafesto. The Communist Dogafesto was made fun of uh, from a lot of folks on the show because of its graphics. And they, they made comments like, oh, this is what Ryan would play because he likes those, those games with pixel graphics. But see, they're missing out on the fact that not every game has to have movie-like graphics to be fun. So I've purchased this game. Since Zeb would not do it for his community, I'm doing it for mine. And we're going to game with Communist Dogafesto. Now I'm going to give you one little warning here for anybody who this is your first time looking at Linux. You, you could see how many games here I can play with Linux, right? There's no shortage of awesome AAA games here. Borderlands, Euro Trucks, Half-Life, Rocket League, Star Wars stuff, Warhammer 40,000, XCOM 2. This is not a game to show off the graphics of Linux. Those games can play in Linux. I just want to play this Communist Dogafesto to get back at PZ. So here we go. Well, it already starts off in a very small screen, but we can change that. See, they've thought of everything. Manifesto. Or not, it's not letting me. Go ahead and change it. Come on. Resolution width. Oh, press space. I guess you manually type it in. All right, so it's a little quaint. No big deal. 1920. Communist Dogafesto. Seeing it here, th here. First, 1903. Constantine something derives the rocket space program where intelligent dogs come to life. First Soviet rocket is launched. This is some scary stuff in 1933. Could really happen. We're at 145 frames per second. Frankly, with the graphics, I was expecting to be in three, four hundreds like you get in CSGO, but uh, maybe we're capped on V-Sync or something here. The dogs in these test flights exhibit heightened learning abilities upon the return to Earth. See, everybody thinks dogs are so friendly. But clearly, this show is given the opportunity. They'll take advantage of it. The first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, orbits the planet Earth. The story is deep. November 1957, Laika is the first dog launched into orbit. So Laika is the ringleader here that starts off this whole communist war. Upon her return to Earth, she exhibits vastly increased intelligence. This is not good, folks. This is not good at all. January 1958, the Soviet space program is redirected towards studying the effects of space on canine intelligence. Uh, we get our first glimpse into the game here. So I'm already feeling the kind of Wolfenstein graphic feel. X to pick up items. All right, I need to find an item to pick up. Oh, look at this, we've got a steel rod. And you can see the combat is going to be intense here. I don't know what anybody was making fun of. It's got a data pad. It gives us information right away. We don't have to click on anything or go into in team menus, brilliantly programmed. Oh, we got dog food too. Oh, well, soup bowl. Graphics are, or the uh, controls are a little uh, sensitive. Like, you just barely move the controller and you jump around. We'll get used to it. Use X to open doors. A keypad. You'll need the access code to get up there. What is the access code? What's the, what's the access code? Maybe it's in here. Um, maybe we can just 
break a vent. There you go. My kind of game. See, I know this stuff. All right. Oh, we got our first dog. I don't know what Jeff was talking about. You can clearly see this incredible graphics, incredibly intense storyline. Come here, puppy. Wow. Did I already die? <clears throat> Let's try this again. We got this. Skip the story part this time. Uh, all right, X to pick things up. See, we're already rolling way faster. We'll get the uh, dog food and data pad, and we'll break that. Pick that. Why are we dropping things? I want to pick that back up. All right. Here we go. On. I got him. I cannot believe I paid seven dollars for this. Uh, all right, let's try again here. Is there is there another wet? Maybe there's a different because there was another vet over here. Maybe we should be going somewhere else. This game's very unforgiving. Your first level, your first enemy is completely destroys you. Isn't there another vent? I guess there's not. All right. Chunk of metal. Hmm. Oxygen tank don't do much. Steel plating we've taken. What the heck happened? I killed him, and then he blows up, and I die too. Maybe I'm not supposed to fight him. Maybe I'm supposed to just run. See, Zeb, this is a thinking game. All right. Use keypad to open doors. Let's get out of here. Okay, so that's clearly not the fix there. I wonder if I can get my money back still. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe everybody was right. Maybe this isn't. Maybe this isn't the greatest uh, game. <clears throat> There's our crowbar here. Why for flashlight? Maybe the flashlight blinds them. So you kill them and you die. So you have to kill them to move on. So all you have is a crowbar. And you move slow as dirt. So I'm going to go get a refund from Steam, hopefully, on this game. That doesn't mean you were right, Zeb. Sometimes. There are great games with terrible graphics. This just doesn't happen to be one. But Ubuntu Mate is incredible. It is something you should definitely check out if you're looking for a different desktop environment. And Manjaro does it very well. So let me know in the comments below if you've checked out Ma Mate and if you've played the Communist Dogafesto and what you think of it. Uh, based on this, if you haven't picked it up yet, I definitely recommend it. Incredible. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget us, run.